this is your girl Taylor. Thanks for tuning in and watching today. So as um, most of you guys already probably know, if you follow me on Instagram or Twitter, I asked uh, probably almost a week ago or maybe about five, um, about half a week ago. Um, about four or five days ago, um, I asked you guys, uh, I told you guys I wanted to do a Hot Topic video and that I was going to film a Hot Topic video and I needed some good Hot Topics. Well, I had a pretty good response on my Instagram. Didn't really have a response on my Twitter and didn't have a response on my Facebook, but Instagram was booming. So I was like, okay, I'll go with that. <laughs> and so, because all of the Hot Topics that people were just think I really really liked about four or five of them I liked all of them that commented so it was about six five four or five comments uh, for hot topics so I'm gonna definitely do all of those I'm just gonna do one at a time and just make all of those videos so stay tuned for those as well um I was struggling 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 trying to figure out which topic talk about first because all of them are so hefty I can't fill it all in one video it would be just impossible so I decided to do the one that hits home the closest right now that's something that I've been dealing with for about two years now I think and that is embracing my singleness so um, I've been single for, like I said, about two years now, I think. Yeah. Um, and I am getting to the, you know how you have the stages? I feel like everyone has stages of singleness. This is just my personal opinion. I think when you're first become single, um, you go through anger and all these built up emotions and what you should have, could have, would have said to that other person <laughs> you go through the anger stage first I feel and then you go through the sadness um, a lot of people are like oh well I go through sadness first but yeah I think most people go through the anger first and then they go to sadness and then they go back to anger and then they go to sadness again so it's anger and sadness it, it can switch positions on that but either way you're gonna feel some anger you're gonna feel sadness um, that's just one stage of it <clears throat> and what people don't know is there's so many stages to this, but I'm going to kind of try to um, break it down in a few stages. So stage one, stage one would basically be, like I said, admit that you are now single, point blank. First thing you got to do is just make sure that you understand, okay, let me get closure from this person. But what people don't, or what people fail to realize is you sometimes are not, able to get closure from that person directly. I never got to apologize. I got never I never got apologized to until probably almost a year after the event happened. Um after I became single, that's when that person did finally apologize and admit the wrongdoing that was done in the relationship and you know by then it was just like, "Oh, okay. Well, thanks for apologizing, but it wasn't like a huge uh thing." But it definitely helps. However, a lot of people, I think, get stuck with the relationship because they don't first admit, okay, I need closure, and it doesn't have to come from that person. How does it not come from that person directly? Okay, how do you still get closure, you ask? Well, you first have to step back and say, okay, this person, although I loved them, and although they were a huge part of my life, they are now not in my life and if you can just kind of say that to yourself and be okay with that and just say but I'm here and I'm okay and whatever anger I had toward this person now is null it's void it doesn't matter Whatever hurt you felt and you feel like you need apology and all this, and you very might well deserve that. But, hey, how many girls actually get that apology? And how many girls actually get the apology and still and feel 100% better? Not many. I got an apology. Didn't feel make me feel any better. It didn't liberate me to have an apology. It's kind of like, okay. <laughs> it, it, it helps in its own way, but it doesn't really take the sting away. Um, which brings me to number two on the singleness, um, kind of the, one of the um, stages of being single, is that, that sting. 
That sting, y'all. Y'all all have it. I don't care if you're with that guy for a month and you broke up with him the next month <laughs> or he broke up with you or however it was. I don't care if it was for a week. You have a sting. And if you can just admit that you have a sting, that would be the best thing you could do for yourself. Because I know for one thing, I was so in denial i was like oh we could be friends still we could do this we could do that there's very rare times where you're going to still be friends with your ex very rare very minimal um times so yeah you you got to cut that cord um i call it and all my friends know this <laughs> it's called the boyfriend detox <laughs> it's something that i kind of came up with but someone probably already has it in a book somewhere but i mean i came up with it myself but it's called the boyfriend detox. That means you take him off Facebook, you take him off every social network, you delete his number in your phone, you delete every, you cut every physical tie, emotional tie, you cut every physical tie first. And that will help your emotional tie and your spiritual tie and all that stuff diminish because only time heals wounds you know it's like everyone knows that saying and it's true guys it's so true but if you if you hold it on to this and time goes by that's not going to help you like that's not what that saying is about the saying is about time heals all wounds but you have to let that stuff go you have to let it go you have to let it go and know that that was not a failure, but it was a learning experience. And just look at it that way. If you look at it all as failures, oh my God, I probably have a thousand failures. Like, <laughs> you don't want to take it there. Don't make it so personal. Just, it is personal. Don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to diminish anyone's feelings. But do you see what I mean when I'm saying don't get so caught up that it's ruining so much? I think sometimes we get so distracted in the breakup and how it happened and why it happened than to see what it released you and freed you for i just said something there it released you and freed you for something greater point blank and it's so easy i know for me to say that now because i'm over the hill there's days where i still think about it and i'm like oh that was jacked up <laughs> you're gonna have your days but don't have it every day that's the point of the whole situation. Don't have it every day. Be free to that situation. Don't let that situation have you bound. Or guess what? That other person has won. Because it's not a game. I'm not saying we're playing a game here. But what you see what I'm saying? That other person has you bound because you can't get past the breakup. You can't get past why, who done it, who did this, who did Who cares? It's over. It's done. Let that free you. Let it free you. You couldn't free it yourself, then let it free you now. It's it's now done, it's over, and move on. And this goes for guys and girls. I'm not just talking about girls, I'm not just talking about guys. This goes both ways, this is unisex. So yeah, everyone goes through singleness in their lives. Um, you have to be single first. <laughs> so, um, And then another stage, which is the stage I'm kind of at a little bit, and I think a lot of girls are at that are single because we kind of got best the other stuff we're like oh forget that guy or forget that girl you know whatever like I'm done with that I'm done with that like we get that now we know that we don't want to go back we get that but now it's the what do I do now what do I do now I know me sometimes I'll talk to God and I'm just like God sometimes you just want a guy to text you like you know like <laughs> I don't know, you just, you know, you know that feeling where you just want a guy that like, hey baby, <laughs> or hey girl, what's up, or, um, or hey, you know, whoever, like, you just want a guy to realize that you're alive, and I think all of us have that one guy friend that we go to to have that guy conversation, well, there was one point where I didn't have any guy, I still have one, I have one guy that I go to for that guy conversation, but at one point I didn't, and it was hard, because you, you feel like you need that guy thing, and then for those who still have fathers in their lives, it's such a blessing and use that you know like instead of getting caught up with this other guy when you want that guy thing go to your dad you know it's not and you know don't think of it as a romantic way it's you go to your father because you you want that intimate you want that um you want that intimate time with a guy but not not sexual wise I mean as far as conversation and you want to hear someone who loves you and cares about you if you can't go anywhere, go to your father. And for those who don't have fathers anymore physically on earth, like myself, I go to my heavenly father. 
And it's so hard to say that, and I'm getting chills right now because it's so hard to do that in the moment. You're like, I want to talk to a guy. You don't necessarily want to text Jesus. Like, that's not really, <laughs> that's not really what you want. It's what you meant by that. You want to, you want to um, speak to a guy physically. But what it really is is you have to think beyond physical. If you think emotionally, spiritually, you're really just wanting to be loved. Point blank. Period. You want to be loved. And, you know, so I feel like if I had my father still here and I was going through lonely days like that, I would just call my daddy. Like, hey, dad, just hearing that male voice speak into your life and be so positive to you, have that intimate love with him, even if it's over the phone, would be great. You know, so, you know, and it's cool because Father's Day is coming up, you know, so it's an awesome thing. Because who's the first guy you love? Most girls, the first guy you love is your dad. Your daddy, your papa, whatever you call him, <laughs> that's who's the first guy you love on earth. Like, usually that's the situation. And if it's not your father, it was your uncle or whoever it was in your life that was that guy that you first knew that you loved, unconditional love. And that daddy's love is better than any love ever, except for God, because daddy's love is so unconditional and so pure he doesn't care if you cussed him out last week your daddy is your daddy you know like that's sacred to me and uh so yeah for the you girls who like are like me who don't have your physical father in your life because of maybe they are deceased or they um just aren't in your lives for whatever reason go to your heavenly father god is here for you Jesus is there for you and speak to him you know and I'm speaking to myself right now because I don't always practice what I preach but maybe one day I'll look at this video and be like oh okay <laughs> I know what I need to do today and um and I know it's hard too because we have those while in this stage of wanting that male attention is what it is male attention if we want to be real we want male attention in that stage you have to be sure that you're um not um, being envious of people who do have boyfriends and stuff like that. I know that with me, I'm not envious, but you're kind of like, oh, I want that, you know, like, oh, you, you don't even really like to be around it all the time. I know with me, my best friend has a boyfriend. My other best friend has a husband and I tell them when I'm in town or something like that, like, we, we need to have girls time, you know, like, not the guys, not the guys around, because, not because I don't care about their relationships and because I'm jealous, but because it's awkward for me to be around all that and then be like, okay, awkward, <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, it's kind of awkward, you know, you have to admit it's kind of awkward with stuff like that, um, but, um, even in that, you just have to say, okay, Lord, let me just open myself and be open and be okay with that. Um, and just get me through tonight. Just get me through this dinner or wherever you are and you're around all these couples. Just pray and just be like, okay, this will soon be over. It's okay. <laughs> like, type on your phone. Do something. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's sometimes you are kind of like, not jealous, but you're kind of like, awkward, you know, like, uh this is so weird because everyone's kind of clicked up but um yeah it's okay <laughs> it's okay to feel that way and I think a lot of girls are ashamed of feeling that way or we get upset and we and I still get upset and I'm just like really really why would you do that <laughs> why would y'all bring y'all's boyfriends or whatever you know in whatever kind of situation sometimes I'm on the bus and I see this couple just like kissing and I'm like ew you're gross <laughs> But really, I'm just, like, bored with my life, I guess. But, um, yeah, so it's really funny because it's so frustrating sometimes. And then yet, it's okay because it's not your time. It's not your time yet. And when it's right, it'll be right. And it's especially good sometimes when, um, not good, but it feels better when you do hear about drama and stuff in other situations. You're just like, oh. I'm glad I'd go through that right now. Like the Lord is preparing me. <laughs> Not every relationship has its drama, so you know you're gonna have drama. But um, yeah, it, it's right now I'm kind of drama free when it comes to guys, and so on that part I'm so blessed. <laughs> I don't have to sit up here and tell nobody where I am. I ain't gotta sit up here and tell nobody why, when, how, when, and where. 
all of them things. I ain't got to answer to nobody but me. Nobody. I'll check in with my mama, but that's about it. Like, I ain't got to talk to nobody. So, you know, those are the perks. Um, but basically, through all these stages, the, the big thing that comes out of it is being free and, be, and knowing that you are okay um, being single. And don't let anyone ever tell you that you're wrong for being single my friend aurora bless her heart i know she's watching she tried to hook me up with everybody and anybody but sometimes i think when people are in love and happy they want everyone to be in love and happy too but what you don't get is sometimes you can be single and happy i know a lot of people don't think that i'm happy i'm darn well happy because i've been through the drama with people who weren't right for me so i'd rather wait for a long time if i have to however long it takes to wait for the right thing then when we do go through issues it's stuff that makes sense it's stuff that we can get through together and pursue on into our relationship i'd rather do that than sit up here and take someone who's gonna have all these drama issues and just weird stuff going on and um i just don't feel like going through that with someone who's not my future husband so I'd rather wait and be patient and do what it takes to just wait and just do what it takes to just wait for that person that God has stored for me he's preparing him wherever he is in the world he's preparing me for him because I don't want to do a disservice to him and I don't want him to do a disservice to me and he has to be the man of the house when we get married and you know I'm skipping through a lot of stuff but you know eventually you get to marriage and um hopefully <laughs> and uh i want him to be the man that god um created him to be and i want him, me to be the woman that god created me to be and the wife and the well the future wife um that god created me to be so i know this is kind of deep and you fellas are probably like whoa back up how did we get to marriage <laughs> but you know as a christian i don't date for just to play around i date for future hopefully marriage i'm not trying to marry you tomorrow but that is what i date for ultimately but um anyways i hope this kind of was a good topic desiree is the one desiree nichols is the one who uh suggested this hot topic and so shout out to you girl i have all of her um not all of her social network but her um i think she has a twitter if so i'm gonna put it down below and i know she has an instagram so i'll put that down below go follow her follow her follow her she's an awesome woman she's so cool and down to earth she's amazing so shout out to desiree for um putting embracing your singleness i really hope this video kind of helped show you how i embrace my singleness and um yeah you're gonna have good days and bad days but it's all worth it in the end right all right bye guys have a great day don't forget to rate comment and subscribe and see you next time